We have seen a spate of new Bitcoin ETF offerings recently, uh, including from BlackRock. Even though everybody knows the SEC yeah. and Gary Gensler is completely hostile to the idea, and they, everybody said, well, they're going to say no to a Bitcoin ETF, just like they said no to everybody else. But I'm wondering why now they're not going to waste their time. Yeah. Trust me, yeah. BlackRock isn't, if they don't think they have some chance sure. of doing something. So, you know, last week, uh, June 15th, was kind of the, the bridge into the 10 months coming into the halving. It just happened to coincide with BlackRock announcing their ETF. And we're up, I think, uh, 14, 15% since that announcement. Um, but I think the rally is just beginning uh, over the next year. Farnsworth? The usual, sir. Which one's the best crypto asset? Well, Bitcoin's the best crypto asset. What's the second best? There is no second best. There is no second best crypto asset. What's going on guys? K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're enjoying your day. Hope you enjoyed the Bitcoin pump. Still currently sitting above 30,000 at the time of making this video. Of course, anything could change. We do know how significant this weekly candle close is going to be for Bitcoin. And just a friendly reminder, guys, since Jim Cramer told everybody to sell their crypto at $17,000, uh, yeah, it's up 75%. So good thing we didn't listen to Jim Cramer, right? So that being said, guys, as you can see, right here, we are at a very critical resistance because, of course, this was providing support for Bitcoin basically for about a year. And once we fell through, we plummeted. And you could see that's exactly where we're getting hung up right now. So very, very important to see what happens at the end of this week. I also specifically want to talk about this sort of controversy. Some people saying BlackRock ETF is the greatest thing to happen to crypto. Others saying it's the absolute worst thing. Do they know something that we don't know? Considering that the SEC has pretty much just totally not approved any of them, right? Do they know something that we don't? And also, there is a bit of a controversial take on this, which I do want to go into. So it's something that you may want to consider, especially if you own cryptocurrencies and especially if you're in the USA, obviously. And uh, there is a metric as well, guys, on Bitcoin right now that we have not seen triggered in about a year. And yeah, it just finally happened. So lots of things. I want to talk about the potential numbers that we could see if these institutions do get the allocation via ETF vehicle. So crazy stuff today, guys. And while I do want to talk about the charts and how we are at this, you know, very critical level. In fact, you can see right here, we actually did flip this right here, right? This little mini resistance, right? Now we're kind of having it as support over on the uh, very low time frame, two hours. But I'm going to put this at the end of the video because I think you're going to really want to hear this. So just to point something out real quick, okay? Key Young Ju says that, you know, a lot of people, oh, it's just a short squeeze. He says, this is not a short squeeze. Someone is just buying a lot of Bitcoin. So he says, I repeat, this is not a short squeeze, but someone or some ones is buying a lot of Bitcoin, okay? So we don't know if this is the institutions getting excited, big name players, we saw whale activity, right? But if we come over here, Glassnode is showing us that we have not seen something like this since right before the Terra Luna crash. The monthly transfer volume has overtaken the yearly average baseline for the first time in over a year. This suggests an expansion in on-chain activity typical of improving network fundamentals and growing network utilization. And we know that when we do see more activity, generally we tend to see the price follow. Oh, and by the way, U.S. banks facing 1.5 trillion tidal wave of debt as Federal Reserve outlines institutions most at risk. So coming over here again, let's talk about this BlackRock conspiracy. Is it a conspiracy? Do they know something that we don't? They were talking about this over on CNBC. I'll roll the clip and then I want to dive into it a little bit. I want to ask a, a completely different question for you, Tom, because he's our overall ETF maven here. We have seen a spate of new Bitcoin ETF offerings recently, uh, including from BlackRock. Even though everybody knows the SEC yeah. and Gary Gensler is completely hostile to the idea. And everybody said, well, they're going to say no to a Bitcoin ETF, just like they said no to everybody else. But I'm wondering why now? Does, yeah. what, is, what, why, what does BlackRock think they're going to get out of this effort? You can't get away from your favorite subject here, can well, you? Well, <laughs> people ask me about it, and I don't have an easy answer for it. Yeah. it, 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 it 
I, I always think something. I'm missing something here. I, I think you're right. I think your sniffer you think usually I'm missing is something. No, no. I think you're you're onto something. I think your sniffer is always really pretty good, Bob. If BlackRock all of a sudden has filed for a Bitcoin ETF that's not futures based, it's spot Bitcoin. Right. Okay. And Ginsler said, no way, that's not going to happen. But at the same time, they're bringing together some pretty good partners from a custody standpoint. They've got Bank of New York Mellon. They've got Coinbase. Right. They've got uh, an agreement, a surveillance agreement with NASDAQ to help with the security aspect of it. So they're trying to show the SEC that they're putting all the safety uh, things, uh, provisions in place to give them the confidence to give them that acceptance of their application. I think the big thing we know, as Gensler said, we're not going to do anything there unless we have the exchanges regulated and Coinbase right. is not regulated. But that's my question. Do you do you think this is going to change their mind? I can't without the without the clear regulatory authority and they're not getting a bill through Congress. So now he's just resorted to to essentially suing everybody. He's, he's trying to regulate uh, by uh, essentially by by filing complaints. Yeah. Um, I don't well, see how this changes. If anybody can get it done, would you would you bet against BlackRock? No. You know they're they're the behemoth, right? right. They're, they're the. That's why I'm thinking. I still don't quite get. Yeah. I don't. How are they going to change his mind? I mean, if they can partner with Coinbase and say, "Look, you agree to get regulated." What would that do to your business? Imagine institutional investments, just one percent allocation to Coinbase and what that would mean. It, we're talking about a, a lot of money. Yeah. So there are a lot of pe people like you that are saying, huh, is this finally the time? Is it going to happen? We're going to follow this very carefully, folks, because, again, they're not going to waste their time. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah. BlackRock isn't, if they don't think they have some chance sure. of doing something. So according to Noel in Madrid, she says, this is my take on the BlackRock Bitcoin ETF filing. Big news, BlackRock is the world's largest asset manager. They basically control everything. Do a Google search on BlackRock. These guys have their hands in the pockets of everything. But she says, you know what? It's not going to happen. BlackRock knows this. Rather, it is sending a political message. Now, Justin Slaughter says, I respectfully disagree with Noel on this. I think BlackRock is doing this on the merits, seeking to get a Bitcoin ETF approved rather than trying to send a political message. Now, here's where it gets tricky. Kevin Svensson, as you guys know, um, I really enjoy his analysis. He's a, uh, he's a buddy of mine. And he says, I recently said that the BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF is a price control mechanism for Bitcoin. Many people refuse to believe it. The only reason BlackRock filed for a Bitcoin ETF is for further control of the world's finances. That is the point of everything they do. Don't lie to yourself. I believe BlackRock's involvement in Bitcoin means that they know who or what Satoshi is. That's crazy. So he, so Kevin thinks that they may know the identity of Satoshi. I do not think they would do this without knowing that for sure. <clears throat> and there's been speculation about it being, you know, a mix of uh, UK and, and, and US agencies. BlackRock has more power than the United States government itself. Again, I agree. Google, Google BlackRock. Yeah. This is going to change the crypto space forever. Be careful what you wish for. This is one of the most controversial takes on Bitcoin at the moment. So I do, uh, I could see where Kevin is coming from. This does make a lot of sense, right? And, and, and this is what we're thinking anyway. They want to push out all the other guys, right? They, they don't like the fact that Coinbase got to front run them. They want their pals, right? They want fidelity. They want, you know, Charles Schwab, JP Morgan, BlackRock, right? All the old school pals, right? They don't want to let the new guys in. So they're creating this hostile takeover. And I explained to you guys that when we were just seeing the amount of just fear mongering and FUD that was coming out in the news, it got to a point where it was like, okay, this is coordinated. You know what I mean? Like it's one thing to just have a couple bad stories come out here and there, but I was like, this is being orchestrated. This is ridiculous. And that's why I made that video that I made right the day before it pumped. And I said, guys, this is crazy. Like th there's something definitely up. They're trying to blindside you. And you know, while Kevin may feel this way, I do agree with him that there, there certainly is a level of control. In fact, the BlackRock CEO, Larry Fink came out and said, you know, they want KYC. They don't, they don't like decentralized exchanges. They want every customer accounted for. They want to know exactly what they're doing, exactly what they're trading. And that's not really the ethos of crypto. 
And maybe they do want to suppress the price. Maybe they do want to hold it down. Sure, I'm sure the volatility would come down ultimately once we had that. But just to talk about what could happen, the tidal wave initially, like for example, globally, there's 60 trillion in pension funds, 250 trillion in private retirement savings. Funds put around 3% of that into gold and about 20% into alternative assets. So that's like 23% roughly. So basically just simple math. If we only get a half of a percent, a half of a percent of that 23%, that would 15X the price of crypto, which means that you would see Bitcoin trading at $450,000 per coin. Now, again, not trying to create hopium, but people that are like, should I buy now? Should I wait for price to go lower? It's all about your time horizon. I mean, are you try are you worried about what's going to happen next week, next month? Okay, then maybe if, if you're in profits, maybe you should take profits, not financial advice. But if you have a time horizon of four years, five years, 10 years, and you know that the price of Bitcoin could go anywhere from 450 to a million dollars, and you're worried about if buying at 30K is too high, then you really have to ask yourself why you're you know, in the space because, you know, again, like Bit Harrington pointed out, generally the best buy opportunities are when you're two third below the all time high. And we are currently back above that. So you could argue that that was the dip buying area. I mean, you could, you could still hope for 10 K. I know there's people still hoping for 10 K. I feel really bad for these people. They're probably not going to get it. Um, but you know, Mark Yusko, he was commenting on it as well. And he's basically saying it's a perfect storm. When you have BlackRock entering the fray, and also, by the way, Citadel and Schwab and Fidelity backing EDX Markets, the crypto exchange that also launched this week, what does it signal? Look, I think it's it's great that the traditional financial services firms are coming around to the technological innovation that's been going on for the last really five, 14 years since the birth of Bitcoin, but really the last five years have been the acceleration. And, and we knew that eventually the big firms would, would find their way uh, into the space. But I, I actually think it's a, a validation of, of, one, the technology, and two, validation of, of business models saying that, look, this is here to stay. So this is good news and this rally has legs. Is that what you're saying? Well, I think the rally is is just beginning. You know, we we just entered the what's called the seasonal period of, of crypto summer. There's this four year cycle around something called the halving, uh, which is where the block rewards for the Bitcoin blockchain change every four years. That causes a, a period of accumulation going into that. That event will occur next April. That's called crypto summer. Then we usually get a speculative blow off after the halving event and then a, a overreaction on, on the downside to called crypto winter. So, you know, last week, uh, June 15th was kind of the, the bridge into the 10 months coming into the halving. It just happened to coincide with BlackRock announcing their ETF. And we're up, I think, uh, 14, 15 percent since that announcement. Um, but I think the rally is just beginning uh, over the next year. I like the way Vance Spencer put it. If I had to guess, 2017 was the liquidity cycle. 2021 was liquidity plus initial use case, you know, DeFi, NFTs, things like that. 2024 to 2027, he says liquidity regulatory sub mass adoption cycle between 100 million to 500 million monthly active users. And finally, 2030 to 2033 nation state mass adoption cycle. So... Basically, if you got 10 years, <laughs> you know, then, uh, you know, we could have that full on adoption. But I think that these prices are definitely going to get higher faster than most people expect. Um, you know, when price gets boring, when there's a lot of negativity, when you become desensitized and then all of a sudden the price starts pumping, there tends to be that sort of uh, this can't be real. This can't be happening. You know, I mean, man, I got to tell you, I don't want to call anybody out right now, but there's a few uh, even even some of my like friends in the crypto space. Some of them are even influencers that have literally just been talking nothing but bearishness since the bottom, like just doom and gloom. And we were at 15.5 and we're over 30. And so we basically doubled the price at one point. And to think of how many people that were just sitting on the sideline because they were scared to have some exposure to crypto. Um, so yeah, I don't know. But anyway, let's dive in. Let's have a look at the charts super quick. The reason I pushed the charts to the end is because we've already talked about this and I'm not really looking for any short-term type 
you know, things. I'm looking for major, major confirmation on this weekly. And as we can see right here, we are steadily holding above this area. And again, you know, we're looking for something over here to confirm. We can get some money flow into the green. That would be nice. We also are looking for the green on the guppy, right? And we know that we're, we're definitely... I would say at the tail, tail, tail end of the bear right here. So we're either in an area like this or an area like this back here, right? And then what do you do? You wait for that flash of green and that basically lets you know that the bull run is on, right? Um, technically, if you go to the bottom of these wicks right here, we are actually above, this is over on Bitfinex, but we are above these wicks right here. So, I mean, is that a perfect flip? Not exactly. Same thing up here. We have this uh, um, linear trend, right? That we're trying. I mean, you could argue that we're technically above it, but I would really like to see like a nice, solid, clean break of it because right here we have the 1.619 and that is sitting at 30,540 bucks. So yeah, closing above that, would open up the door for us to be able to head all the way back up here to at least 47,500. Of course, it's not going to be a straight shot, but there's nothing in between these two areas, right? So you could see that that would be the next area that you would want to hit. If we come over here, you could see that we are having the EMA ribbon flip. So if we get confirmation on this, especially like another candle next week, then I'm not really sure how I can even remotely be even somewhat bearish because that is very, 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 very good for Bitcoin. And again, we're looking for that MACD flip as well. And we have broken the downward sloping trend. So, you know, just getting back to Bit Harrington, what he said, you know, should, should you wait? I can't tell you guys what to do. It's up to you. But I mean, we had, we had a very long time to accumulate down at these levels and markets usually don't get what they want. And a lot of people wanted price to go lower. People were calling for 10, 12. So, I mean, some people were calling for three, five. I mean, come on, people. You know, let's be realistic here. Look at these cycles. Look at where we're at. And you could see that we are due. We are due for that next big move. So that's it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel. Hope you're having a wonderful and beautiful day. Let me know what you think uh, about the Bitcoin chart. You know, could we have a pullback? Of course, it, it, I would expect that. But do I think the bottom is in? Yes, I do. Do I think we're going lower than the bottom? No, I don't. Um, so yeah, that's it for me, guys. Thank you so much. Hope you're having a great day. Exciting times ahead. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be a straight line. It's going to be a little bit rough. There's going to be definitely some rough patches for sure with the regulation and I'm sure the laws that come out, you know, I'm sure, you know, you know how the government is, right? They, they usually over regulate at first, right? They go too hard and then they pull back. So I don't think this is going to be, you know, a straight beeline, but I am excited. I am pumped and I am looking forward to the next couple of years, actually. So for everyone that's supported the channel and stuck around, you know, I've been making these videos for years. A lot of you I've known for a very long time and some of you are new, but we're going to continue on this crazy journey and we are going to have an awesome time and hopefully make a lot of money in the process. So that is it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel. You guys rock. You're the reason that I make these videos. Of course, if you do want to learn how to trade, make sure you watch the tutorials and also check the links below over $56,000 in bonuses. Until next time, stay crypto. And of course, peace out.